Good day everyone! In this video, we will discuss about mathematical induction. Mathematical induction is a principle used to formalize a proof of an intuitive argument. To use the mathematical induction in proving an argument, we should be satisfying the two given conditions. For the first one, the statement should be true for P of 1. And the second one is, if P of k is true for some positive k, then P of k plus 1 is also true. If these two conditions are being satisfied, then we can say that the statement P of n is true for all positive integers n. We have three steps in proving using mathematical induction. The first step is we need to verify that the given mathematical statement is true for P of 1. The second step, we need to assume that n is equal to k, then p of k will also be true. The last one is we also need to assume that p of k plus 1 is also true for the given mathematical statement. Let us consider this example and apply the mathematical induction in proving the given statement. Prove that for any positive n, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus and so on and so forth plus n is actually equal to n times n plus 1 all over 2. The given mathematical statement simply states that if we will be adding consecutive numbers up to n, then their sum will be equal to n times n plus 1 all over 2. For example, if we will be adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus and so on and so forth, plus 10, the sum of the terms 1 to 10 will be equal to 10 times 10 plus 1 all over 2, being n is equal to 10. So when we simplify this, then we're gonna have 10 times 11 divided by 2. So we will have 55. Meaning, Without adding the specific terms, we can actually find the sum using the formula n times n plus 1 divided by 2. However, in this particular example, we need to prove using the mathematical induction that the given mathematical statement is true. To do that, we will be doing it step by step. For the step 1, we need to determine if the mathematical statement is true for p of 1. p of 1 means we only have the first term. So, it will become 1 is equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 all over 2. Simplifying this, we will have 1 equals 1 times 2 divided by 2. 1 is equal to 2 divided by 2 and finally, we have 1 is equal to 1. Notice that P of 1 is true. Since the first step is being satisfied, then we need to proceed to the next step. On the next step, we need to assume that N is equal to K. Since N is equal to K, then our given mathematical statement will become 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus and so on and so forth, plus k is equal to k times k plus 1 all over 2. Notice that we have substituted k in the variable n. Next step, we also need to assume that our statement is also true for k plus 1. Now, k plus 1 here is actually the succeeding number of k. Therefore, if we will be adding another term here, which is k plus 1, then we will have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus and so on and so forth plus k plus k plus 1. Then, the expression on the right side will become k plus 1 times 
k plus 2 divided by 2. Now, where did we get k plus 1 and k plus 2? From here, we have written k as k plus 1, and this one is also k plus 1, but since we have plus 1 here, so this became plus 2. Now, the proving will start here. We need to show that the left side of the equation is actually equal to the right side of the equation. With that, we are actually showing that the mathematical statement is also true for p of k plus 1. Looking at this mathematical statement here, notice that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus and so on and so forth plus k is actually equal to the expression k times k plus 1 all over 2. So we can actually substitute this expression to this one because they are actually equal. So we're gonna have k times k plus 1 all over 2 plus k plus 1 is equal to k plus 1 times k plus 2 divided by 2. Using algebraic manipulations, we will be showing that the left side is actually equal to the right side of the equation. So, adding these two, since we have a denominator 2 here, we will also be putting a denominator to this expression k plus 1. So, we will have k times k plus 1 all over 2 plus 2 quantity k plus 1 all over 2 is equal to k plus 1 times k plus 2 all over 2. Since we now have here same denominators, we can actually combine the numerators. So we're gonna have k times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1 all over 2 is equal to k plus 1 times k plus 2 all over 2. Next, looking at this one, notice that we have common factor here, which is equal to k plus 1. And also on this one, we can actually factor that out, giving us with k plus 1 times k plus 2 is equal to so k plus 1 times k plus 2 all over 2. Notice from here that the left side and the right side of the equation are equal. Therefore, the mathematical sentence 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus and so on and so forth plus n is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2 is true. Let us have another example. Prove that for any positive integer n, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus and so on and so forth plus 2n minus 1 is actually equal to n squared. Meaning, if we will be adding consecutive odd numbers wherein the last number is represented by 2n minus 1, then the sum will be equal to n squared. Giving an example, suppose we have 1 plus 3 plus 5 which is equal to 9, notice that 5 being the last number is actually equal to 2n minus 1. Computing for the value of n, we're gonna have 2n is equal to 6, therefore n is equal to 3. When we substitute 3 in the expression n squared, then the sum will be equal to 3 squared, which is equal to 9 which you will be noticed to be true on our given first example. So, to prove this statement using the mathematical induction, we will be following again the steps. So, for the step 1, we need to show that the mathematical statement is true for P sub 1. So, P sub 1 means that we will be considering the first term. So, 1 being equal to 2n minus 1 and is equal to 2n, then n is equal to 1, then the sum is equal to n squared, which is equal to 1 squared, 
Therefore, the sum is equal to 1. Hence, 1 is equal to 1. Therefore, the statement holds true for P of 1. With this, we can actually continue to our step 2. For the step 2, we need to assume that the mathematical statement is also true for n is equal to k. So meaning, we will be changing all the variables n into k. So we will be having 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus and so on and so forth plus 2k minus 1 is actually equal to k squared. For the step 3, we need to show that the mathematical statement is also true for p of k plus 1. Then, the mathematical statement that we need to show to be true is 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus and so on and so forth plus 2k minus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1 minus 1 is actually equal to k plus 1 quantity squared. Simplifying this expression here, we're gonna have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus and so on and so forth plus 2k minus 1 plus 2k plus 2 minus 1 is equal to k plus 1 quantity squared. Moreover, from here, moreover, that we can actually simplify 2k plus 2 plus 1 into 2k plus 1. So, we're gonna have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus and so on and so forth plus 2k minus 1 plus 2k plus 1 is equal to k plus 1 quantity squared. Now, in here, we need to show that the left side is equal to the right side k plus 1 quantity squared. Moreover, notice that from here up to here, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus and so on and so forth plus 2k minus 1 is actually equal to k squared. So, from here, from 1 up to 2k minus 1, we can actually substitute k squared on that. So, we're gonna have k squared plus 2k plus 1 is equal to k plus 1 quantity squared. k squared plus 2k plus 1 is equal to k plus 1 quantity squared. We have simply removed the open and closed parentheses. Looking at this trinomial, we can actually factor the trinomial into k plus 1 times another k plus 1, which is equal to k plus 1 quantity squared. Since we have two factors which are equal, so we can express the factors as k plus 1 quantity squared equals k plus 1 quantity squared. Notice that the left side and the right side of the equation are equal. Therefore, with this, we can now claim that the statement 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus and so on and so forth plus 2 and minus 1 equals n squared is actually true. I hope that you have understood the lesson. For our next video, we will discuss about the binomial expansion. Thank you so much for listening and see you on our next discussion.